Hello, 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 and welcome to The Place to Soar, where our motto is step out and redesign, and the focus is always on you. We have this beautiful woman here today. Her name is Inere Guy, and I just literally just met her, what, about two weeks ago or something? <laughs> yes. Um, but you all know me. When I meet somebody and I see that spark, I just immediately want them to come on my show. So <laughs> here she is. So um, I'm Anita Russell, the host for The Place to Soar, and mm -hmm. this is my good friend Gail Talaferro. She's the co-host. And we're just going to jump right in. I'm going to read um, in a race bio. It's very exciting. Um, creating buzz as the artist who makes you think, Inner race started writing poems at the age of 10 and songs by 15. Her work exemplifies an appreciation of the human spirit, knowledge of purpose, and love of beauty. I love the way that sounds. <laughs> Through poetry and music, NRA encourages readers and listeners to return home, to transform and discover that absolutely no circumstance can diminish the life and light that shines within each soul. That's so powerful. <laughs> Her latest project fuses poetry with a neo-soul sound in celebration of Sankofa, an African concept that defines the process of, be, uh, of, of going back to our roots, searching out, and acquiring what would be helpful to move forward in life. Working with a music producer mm -hmm. from Black Cree Studios, Inna Ray studied the voice of her late grandmother, mm -hmm. Irene Johnson, to create the album Rena's Moan, an intimate and deep-seated portrayal of what she believes sums up only a portion of her grandmother's life. Through her work with Redwall Productions, Inna Ray has produced the, journey, the, the Journey of Rena's Moan, a documentary that compels women who struggle with sexual shame and generational wounds to start the healing journey and allow their authentic gifts to shine. There's so much more here, but I want to just start <laughs> talking with you. Um, no problem. So just tell me who you are. I mean, because I literally just met you. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm in array, in array. <laughs> We're, I'm in transition, in transition, in transition, in array. And like you said, I'm a singer, songwriter, poet, uh, as well as a bunch of other things, mm -hmm. mom, teacher, blogger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, we're here to talk about more of, of what I do to help out with poetry and the music. So basically what I've been doing that's influenced uh, others outside of my personal realm um, is going back uh, with the concept of Sankofa. I've mm -hmm. taken that concept and I said, well, what exactly is missing in my personal generational line? It's different for everyone. So Sankofa, again, it means it's not taboo to go back into your past and fetch something that was lost or forgotten, bring it into the future or into mm -hmm. the present so that you can move forward in the future. Mm -hmm. So my thought with my generational line and it wound up being that um, it went along with so many other women's generational line because of oppression, racism, all those things, is the voice, uh, you know, the voice mm -hmm. of our grandmothers, their mothers, their mothers' mothers. What, what did they say with their lives? What did they say with their mouths? What did they say if they wrote songs, if they wrote poetry, if they uh, kept records you ever open up the bible yes, and one woman yes. sat down and wrote yes. all that what were they saying what were they really trying to do and so i began to i started to think about what my grandmother was saying and decided to give voice to that because her voice had kind of gotten um it it, it lowered it softened mm -hmm. and it was almost quiet beneath you know poverty trying to raise 11 kids with her husband and she also experienced uh rape at one point in her life, uh, younger, you know, adult life, as she had children. So by the time I came along, I met a pretty quiet woman who mm -hmm. was always thinking, I'm always talking, I'm always singing, I'm always doing these things, where do they come from if she's so quiet, you know, and my mom was sort of quiet too. And I had to go back, and I learned that she wasn't all that quiet. Uh -huh. Something quieted her. And I said, yes. well, something quieted her to the point where, you know, the latter part of her years were not lived out, dreams were not fulfilled, mm -hmm. things were not done. Then 
why don't I do it for her before she passes away? Because that was around the time that she got gotten sick and couldn't really do it. Mm -hmm. So I took Sankofa. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to grab mm -hmm. that voice, bring it into my present, discover who she was, which helped me discover who I who was. <laughs> yes, yes. And then now I can move forward into the future. And my children will have a... a you know, a more speedy path, perhaps, than I did, right. you know, coming to that self-realization. I think it's really cool that it was your grandmother, too. And mm -hmm. I think probably the reason that resonates me, with me is because I spent most of my childhood not knowing my paternal, I actually neither one of my grandmothers did I know, but my paternal grandmother, I def, but I heard about her. Mm -hmm. um, I heard family members talk about her and, mm -hmm. and all of this. And I always kind of grew up feeling like, like something about me didn't quite fit with my family. And I right. always felt like something is missing. And I, I never knew what it was. Mm -hmm. I met my grandmother um, when I went to college, my freshman year. Mm -hmm. I got up the courage to call her on the phone. Mm -hmm. And when and I lived in Pittsburgh. I grew up in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And so I had to come to Philadelphia to see her. And mm -hmm. I, I remember being so nervous because right. it was like I had no idea what she looked like. And I'm coming to Philadelphia <laughs> and I'm getting off the bus and I don't know. <laughs> but as soon as I stepped off the bus, my grandmother recognized me. Yes. And she came over to me, and as I got to know her, so then once that spark mm -hmm. happened, our I relationship you while you're talking, our relationship mm -hmm. grew yes. from there, mm -hmm. and I started to understand me because I'm looking at her. I'm like, "You're who I am," <laughs> and like, so, like I said, for years and years and years. I just felt so out of place in a lot of ways with my family members. Yes. I mean, I love my family members, but right. I just didn't, there was something missing. And when yes. I met my grandmother, mm -hmm. I saw what was missing. Yes, and this is why it's so important. You know, the Sankofa concept, um, it's actually a word, you know, in mm -hmm. the in African tradition, even in other languages, words mean this whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we have simple words in the, in the Western side of the world, apples and apple. Maybe. Could be a computer, too. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> But for the most part, you think of St. Coven, it's mean, it means this whole big thing. It's not taboo to go back, you know. Mm -hmm. And more than ever, I believe, in the States, because of slavery, yes. because of yes. what poverty has done, and more specifically with women because of the oppression, mm -hmm. we, you know, we had it coming from all different angles. The voices were not turned up. The dreams were not fulfilled. Yes. The money was not made. Things just did not get done. There were sacrifices made. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what we, we if we go back and find, figure that out, you have the voice and then you look at the sacrifice and you put it together. Now you have at least one of your purposes in life. You know, yeah. you know, you have work to do. If you know, no need to be forlorn about anything. If you, if a woman just sits down and says, "Okay, I, my life is boring," or whatever, whatever, go back. And that is so interesting that you <laughs> say that because mm -hmm. you know one of the things that we're missing is communication with the family, yes. with the generation, yes. and we don't. If they shared the information, because you know they were always trying to hide information yes. with the kids. But if we recognize what the sorrows were, the struggles were, you know, the identity of, of our people. For instance, you said that, you know, your grandmother sang. Yes, and she liked to write songs. And she liked, but yet you didn't experience it, you didn't see it because of something that happened in her exactly. life. Exactly. So now you can identify where it came from. Right. Yeah, exactly. and yeah one But you were exactly. thinking. You're the lucky one. Because, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of things that are lost. I think yes. of like crocheting, you know, that's like a lost Quilting. art. Quilting, yes. sewing, you know, that were, was generational yes. things that were passed down through the line. And it's like almost, you know, non-existent. Right. And almost. I, yeah. And I, it's, it's my hope that the more people that learn about uh, what I do and how I do it with my art, that, you know, you know, they wake up a little bit. And when I do my screenings, the women do, the women start to think about, okay, well, what, what gifts did my grandmother give to, you know? And they're carrying the gift, you know? Mm -hmm. So 
uh, you know, we try to start and we think about who you look like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you go back, you know, who in your generation, it might not be your grandmother, it might be your aunt. It might yeah, be, exactly. you know, but exactly. some, if you if you have the pictures and if you don't have them, start taking them so you can pass them down. Mm -hmm. exactly. um, they're your children's children's children will look back and say, I look like aunt so-and-so. That's probably the ancestor exactly. that you carry the same exact gifts, you carry the same look, you carry the same feisty attitude. And that's how, you know, and you could say, what didn't she do? Or if, if somebody knew the story, you know, what didn't she do? You mm -hmm. can grab a hold of it and do it. And that's interesting mm -hmm. how you say that, grab pictures, because when my one grand, well, the first grandmother, when she passed away, mm -hmm. you know, we're going through her stuff. And it's like, she had a fur stall. I'm like, okay, <laughs> she had... You know the satin underwear. Okay, she's jazzy. And then, she's jazzy, jazzy exactly. mama. And then when you pulled out the photo album and you're looking at pictures, I'm like, that looked like that's the Cotton Club. Yes. I'm like back in the day, and yes. I'm like, where's she doing? Who that? <laughs> <laughs> and then all the okay. story starts to come together for you. Yeah, and I'm like, no wonder why. You know, you start <laughs> yeah, putting two. Yeah, exactly I'm like, yeah. no wonder my father always was with the cousins because grandma was in New York. And, <laughs> and you know, but yet she worked. She worked yeah. hard. She collected two pensions. But it was that side mm -hmm. that you never seen. And and you know, she would just say, you know, it's okay to enjoy yourself. I'm like, okay, what do you mean yes. by that? Now, has she told me? you know, a little bit of, <laughs> about her life, then I would have put the two and two together. Yeah. But it's, you know, that communication thing is really strong. And, t and that's why I take pictures now today. Yes. Like, I'll make sure that I take pictures, my mom take pictures, so mm -hmm. that we'll have it and to tell a little story. But I think exactly. one of the things that's interesting, mm -hmm. kind of along the lines of what you're saying, mm -hmm. is, um, you know, the taking pictures is absolutely wonderful, and mm -hmm. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. um, however, I think one of the things that we've lost is that oral tradition where we're mm -hmm. sitting our kids down and we're talking to them and we're telling them. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, we um, did a vacation in Florida. So yes. it was, and it was one of those intergenerational kind right. of vacations and uh -huh. everything, which was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, I have two daughters. Mm -hmm. One was born in Pittsburgh. The other one was born here. So mm -hmm. Olivia has no... She didn't have the childhood in Pittsburgh and all that. So the whole Pittsburgh thing is like Aww. a missing link for her, uh, yes. so to speak. So it is we're real, having this real for her, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. We're having this. I mean, to the point where... Um, she used to tell people she was born in Pittsburgh. She was born in Trenton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. But she used to tell people that she was born Aww. in Pittsburgh. But she was um, asking us so many questions. Mm -hmm. my, my brother and, and, and I, you mm -hmm. know, about our childhood, our growing up, our mom, our yes. grandpa. She was just asking she us might all be of the, these questions. Yeah, and, she might be the family. It's two things I did want to address. One. She might be the family scribe because when you when you dive, well, she's a performer. Yeah, when the you dive performer. into yeah you yeah, dive yeah, into the yeah. traditions, um, the the spiritual women will tell you that every family um, they believe that every family is blessed with a scribe per generation, mm. someone who is born to take on the job to carry the the lineage to the mm -hmm. next generation. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself in that position, yes. you know, and I had a lot of notes that when I went into my grandmother's project, um, I had actually been attacking her life from a journalist perspective since I was mm -hmm. little. And I had all these little notes and I didn't know why I was doing it really. I was just doing it and then I would put it in a notebook and stash it away. And when it, when I then when the project came to me, <laughs> I pulled, I was able oh, to pull wow. all the notes yes, out yes. after she had passed. I had this information, that information, this picture, that picture. So it went really well. So your daughter might actually be the family yeah. scribes. So whenever she asks her questions, answer every last one And that's one interesting of them. because while she was answering, mm -hmm. uh, asking the question, yeah. then we were, we were answering, uh, we right. went way back. Mm -hmm. um, but she was writing everything down. She had a notebook and she was literally yes. writing all of this she stuff down. She may do a book about it, yeah. and which is important. And um, the second thing I wanted to address, which is really important, 
uh, going back into the, the voice of my grandmother was to discover the emotional side because women are emotional people Absolutely. And the things that we carry that may not be addressed we actually hand over to the next generation to try and deal with mm -hmm. so it's always important to try and deal with your stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> in your lifetime you deal with your stuff so that the kids don't necessarily have to take on that yes. as well as their own lives yes. so um, what I noticed with uh, with how we progress and we, how we, you know, we call ourselves being successful and ascending to better places and better places, um, is that the state will tell you and the institutions will tell you, you better yourself with your education, you better yourself with money, and those things are true, but they never really get into bettering yourself from the pain that we might be carrying. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, 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 that's something that, you, you'll see amongst all women. So you have a woman who's on welfare, a woman who has her master's degree, a woman who has her doctorate. They all might be doing differently in their stations in life, but they could all be carrying the same pain. And it's not addressed because we're not talking, she's not talking to her doctor friends, she's not talking to her master friends, right. and on our welfare yes, is by herself yes. feeling like she can't talk to anybody. So the more we, you know, begin to talk about the pain that we're carrying. In my case, my grandmother was carrying pain from the rape. So she had my mom, and by the time my mom had to develop it, her sexuality and see herself as a woman without shame, it was nearly impossible. Oh. And so when it was time for my mom's three daughters, I being one of them, to, you know, develop into womanhood, how do we feel about ourselves sexually? How do we feel about our bodies? It was difficult for her because she's still quiet about some things. Mm. So I basically said, no, we're just going to talk about it finally and deal with how we are facing the world with our interpretation of who we are as women. And, and that is so true, carrying the emotional baggage. Yes. It, because we don't talk about it. Exactly. We don't talk yes. about it. And if we're not talking about it, we're not getting help. Yes. You know, they think, okay, you're supposed to keep everything quiet. You're supposed to be a strong black woman mm -hmm. and be able to take it and hold it. But yes. at that same time, you're using unnecessary energy that can be focusing on something more positive Absolutely. that's going to better your life. Exactly. We don't talk about that emotional baggage because it, it can be very generational. Yes. And then we could just cut it out if we all communicate and really talk about the important issues and move on. Exactly. Because you can't move, <laughs> you can on, move on if you still future. have that emotional you baggage. Exactly. It's almost impossible exactly. to do. And yeah. so because the, the states, they try with the therapies and the welfare and all of that, and the institutions try, you know, with the learning and all of that, but it's, it's only us. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about sister. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. With our mothers and our ancestors yes. who have experienced what we've experienced, mm -hmm. it's only us that can define what we're going through, and it's only us that can redefine it. So if we can figure out a way to just come together <laughs> and work on those things, it will eventually help mm -hmm. in our personal lives. You know, we, some of us, you know, uh, look at the condition of the black family. What's happening? Why can't we get, why can't we? Mm -hmm. Because when we finally dive in with yes. family, with the husband and the kids, and all of a sudden, you know, you hit those, those walls, there's some baggage there that wasn't dealt with from mm -hmm. mom that you're still carrying. <laughs> and mom was carrying grandmas. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you see, you know, across the generational line, the same thing happening. In our minds, within our own generation, we're thinking it's happening for another reason. Well, I'm getting a divorce because he can't, duh, 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 duh. And my mom had her reasons. Well, I'm getting a divorce because, you know, mm -hmm. and my grandmother had, would have her reasons. Well, I'm not paying him no mind because, and it all may have been attached to some of the shame from the rape. Right. Nothing to yes. do with the man. Yes. Nothing yes. to do with the man that you're yes. with. You know, so these things are attacking, you know, so, it is my hope <laughs> when we, you know, when we do the art, we do our screenings and we open up, even if for 20 minutes, uh, I've read an uh, African spiritual book, 15 minutes of a good conversation, honest conversation mm -hmm. with your sisters or brother can do a world of good. 
So, um, there's a couple of things that mm -hmm. I really want you to touch on. One yes. of them is the documentary. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's connected. What I it's saw connected. is this whole it's thing with Rena sort of woven out yes. throughout a lot of things that you do. But then I also want you to talk about the program that you have for young young girls right it's, it's all from rena and, and i will say i'm in the process of working on a different project now but rena's mom is actually the project that branched out from the album so i did the album and because the album was um there was a lot to it you know her voices the songs touched on so many different things i was encouraged to talk about it all the time so i mm -hmm. said well let me just do a documentary that explains it <laughs> that way somebody can press the button and just look mm -hmm. and so that's what i did uh we sat down uh with red wall productions and i talked about the project i talked about the voice i talked about her you know uh passing on and me kind of you know feeling like i had to finish that work before i could move on and it all came together. It's about 26 minutes long, and I do screenings of the documentary for the purpose of sparking conversation about generational issues. And so when we're done, when the screening is done, all of us sit together and we talk. We have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And the goal is for the conversation to be transformational, meaning when we're done, something's changed. Mm -hmm. Something has changed about the way they think. And so, we, <laughs> so how do you, because all of that in a way sounds really mature, like mm -hmm. we get it, we're mature <laughs> women, but how do you communicate those types of ideas to someone who's only 12? Well, I do not use it because in the documentary, I talk about things. I talk about the rape, I talk yeah. about sexuality, I talk about shame abortion, things of those. Mm -hmm. And so the 12 year olds really, you know, some of them are experiencing it to be honest, yeah, yeah. but um, liability issues, you mm -hmm. know, I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, so I created a program called Rena's Chance. Mm -hmm. And Rena's Chance is me actually going into a, a group of young girls and ask and talking about how they feel about themselves talking about the voices that they currently have. Mm -hmm. And when I mean the voice, I don't mean what we're speaking. And then I do mean sometimes what we're speaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what I want them to pay attention to is what they're saying on the inside. The inside There's something being said on the inside that does not get spoken out. So I try to get them to tackle that. Uh, and we write poetry, we play drums, we sing. More the, the, I think the most transformational bit that we do do is we attack today's current music because mm -hmm. music yes, is yes. very um, influential with young people. It's, it's influential with us all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, the, the music that they're, they put out and specifically today um, doesn't always jive well with what they're saying on the inside, mm -hmm. but they don't know it. <laughs> so we'll sit down and if I, if I have the permission of the parents, which I usually get the permissions before, mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about the songs. You know, mm -hmm. I know your kids are listening to it. Yes, yes. <laughs> but by the time we, we look at it, and some of it's porn on paper, right. to be honest. Yes, yeah. um, now they look at it and they can say, you know, and I tell them while you're dancing to it, while you're singing to it, it's all in your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And even in, in, in your subconscious, so even if you may not be acting it out, it all goes there. Mm -hmm. And you haven't quite rid yourself of it by the time you do find yourself in a situation mm -hmm. where, you know, you want to behave like an adult or mm -hmm. the artist you saw on the television being overly sexual or overly, you know, into drugs or overly. And we don't want that programming. So I try to tackle that programming a little bit. And the girls are excited. And then they get to write their own poem about who they feel they are. Mm. And their poetry is completely different. By the time we finish the program, it's completely different from the song that they thought they liked <laughs> or the women that they thought they wanted to be. Mm. That's, so that's very, exciting. very intriguing. So mm -hmm. if someone in our audience wanted to maybe view the documentary uh -huh. or uh, someone has a, a daughter that maybe they would want to participate mm -hmm. in the program that you just described mm -hmm. 
how do they get in touch with you? What do they have to do? Um, is it something that you have kind of like on a website or something and I mm -hmm. can just go and I can say, oh, on June 23rd, <laughs> she's having a workshop. Oh, yeah, well, that the, work, the, the workshop screenings do go on. I'm currently in the process uh, to putting a few together in Mercer County, which is interesting. Oh, good. good. So um, I will have those up on the website, which is nra.com, I-N-N-A-R-A-E.com. Okay. Uh, if they wanted me to come in to work with young girls, same website, just go to the contact page. It's, it's a pull-down screen, drop-down menu, workshop. Rena's chance and they'll pop that in and tell me what they want when they want me to come in and that's how they do that. So the screening that. is the adult workshop? The screening, the screening is the documentary and that's for yes. adults 18 and over. Okay. Okay. I honestly wish I could do it with younger girls but it would, it would have to take place with you bringing your daughter to the actual screening mm -hmm. or somebody just telling their daughter they can go. <laughs> um, but I don't do that in the schools. Oh, do of course. Schools. Yes. So, um, and then the documentary is currently being streamed on Quayle TV. Uh, it's, it's spelled K-W-E-L-I TV. Mm -hmm. And anybody can go on and subscribe to the channel and watch the documentary for a small fee. It's not, it's not expensive at all. Okay, <laughs> excellent, excellent. So um, when I sent the packet to you mm -hmm. and I told you to pick the two sore values that really resonated with you. The mm -hmm. two that you pick were writer's edge yes. and um, legacy. So can, particularly with legacy. Mm -hmm. um, so when you talk about some of these experiences um, from my grandmother, my great grandmother, and how some of that is now showing up in me, mm -hmm. what are some things that I can do to really change the legacy? So if there's something that I know um, that's kind of in my past mm -hmm. and I don't want to take it into my future or I don't want to pass that on to my own daughter. Right. What are some of the things that I can do to kind of prevent that so that the legacy I'm passing on is a different legacy? Right, right. Um, it's so deep because some of it's DNA. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, probably whatever was going on uh, in the womb, at the time, you know, may, you know, somehow you have channeled itself. So mm -hmm. we can't take, there's nothing we can do with that. Right, your child right. got your hair, your <laughs> child got your, you know, like you can't, you know, get, you would, can't, so certain things we can't change patterns. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as recognizing and trying to deal with passing things on, I would say that the best thing to start with is the gifting. F start with the gifting. Don't worry about the 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 crazy stuff. <laughs> Start with the oh, gifting. Oh, there's gifts. Got it. There's gifts too. Yes, so there are yes, two sides yes, to this yes. coin. There's stuff that comes down. With the with my grandmother's rape and the shame, it came down. But so did the love for writing and poetry. Mm. And so I said, well, let me bring some voice to that and see where this takes me. And it, it will drown out a lot, mm -hmm. you know. And then the pain, uh, the pain piece, uh, we have to address on a personal level. Mm -hmm. I, you wouldn't even bring it up with the kids. You have to sit down. I would say sit down with yourself. And with the Writer's Edge piece, I think there was a question regarding what, what I encourage people to do with their writing. Yes. Yeah. Self-reflection is very important. So... You know, if, if you can get quiet for two seconds, we're so busy now. <laughs> but when we get quiet, we know what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. Start journaling. Mm -hmm. And a piece may come up. And pain, depending on how deeply it's buried, may not be the actual pain that's mm -hmm. there. It may be, you know, my husband's getting on my nerves today. And that's all we feel, you know. And then as long as you keep writing and addressing and self-reflecting and writing, rejecting, you eventually will get come to a piece where... This is really about me. Mm. <laughs> and so why we're am actually I feeling almost it? out of time. So okay. can you give us that one piece of wisdom that you want the audience to take away? I would say learn to know, mm -hmm. love, and accept who you are. 
Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I thank like you that. so, so much. And I thank our audience for joining us. And I thank you, um, Ina Ray or Ina Ray, whatever. I'm in transition. <laughs> in transition. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you soon.